Welcome back to my channel. The first part will be on building the backend MongoDB Express and Node.js and what will you learn? So basically, let's see a quick demo of the finished CRUD application with the mean stack. And if you permit me, I will say another few words that if you are new to mean stack, please view this tutorial on my channel for an overview of the mean. Okay, what is the mean concept? MongoDB Express, Angular, and Node.js. So now let's see the CRUD application that you'll be build, building in this two-part series of lectures. All right, so your finished product will look like this. Now, continuing with what we'll be covering in this two-part series, uh, and I am just taking the first part, uh, one part at a time. The next part, the part two, will be about the f building the front-end Angular. So, first of all, we'll discuss the mean stack architecture, and then we'll see getting started with the prerequisites and building the server-side node.js application, installing dependencies, creating an employee interface server-side and connect to the database and then build the RESTful API. Applications built with the mean stack follow the client-server architecture. The client built with Angular can be a web application, a native mobile application or a desktop application. The client communicates with the server through an API which is built with Express. The server then manages the request with the MongoDB database. Let's see all of these in action one by one. So this is the client, which is the Angular. And it is the Angular JavaScript framework. It, its job is to request and display the response for the end users. So it is making request. And then it interacts with the Node.js, which handles the client server requests. So this is the basically passing the request and then node passes it to the express.js to make request to the database and return response. So this is basically to connect to the database which is MongoDB and MongoDB in its turn it returns the DB response and then it returns the response to the request node.js to Angular and it displays the response. So what are the prerequisites for this tutorial series? First of all, you need to have Node.js and MongoDB Atlas cluster installed and you can visit https nodejs.org to download and install Node.js. And if you are new to MongoDB Atlas cluster, please follow this YouTube tutorial to create one MongoDB Atlas Cloud Cluster free of cost. This is my YouTube video, which I will also put in the description. So introduction out of the way, my friends. So let's get our hands dirty by opening this Visual Studio code. Okay. And I have created a directory final in which I am going to um, start my application. So what we will do is I will open a integrated terminal. So which is control backtick hotkey. So um, yeah, so this is terminal integrated terminal. So this is my final directory. So I will issue a command. for making directory, new directory, okay? 
so now and i will change my directory to this newly created directory mean right after doing this i will create a server directory so this is already created now within this mean stack example i will create a directory or folder new folder because i am using um, visual studio code so it's all very easy i don't need to issue any command so i will create a directory called server or a folder called server all right and then um within this server i will create another file another folder rather another folder which is source folder okay new folder src this is the source folder so mean stack server source all right so these are all empty at the moment there are no files so now i will change directory to server cd server okay so now my change directory is you know cursor has come to the server okay so i will issue a command which is npm node package manager npm init y now what this npm init y does it, it creates a package.json in the source folder src folder and if you click on this this will be the same thing name server version description main is index.j scripts test no test specified and exit this is the by default template author name is not there license you can write your own name or whatever license if you have like mit license or any other kind of license that you would like to create for this application you can write over there okay this is package.json this is basically holding all the dependencies for this uh, server side okay so next i will create within this uh, server i will create a file tsconfig.json okay so server create a new file basically file within the server directory so tsconfig.json i'll come to that in a uh, later okay so basically that's on the root mean stack that's the server folder tsconfig.json and then i will come to source cd source source directory and then within the source directory i will create a few files which are just uh, bear with me just follow me if you'd like um, add new file the first of them is database dot ts okay ts for typescript and another file new file employee dot routes dot ts or routes dot ts employee dot routes dot ts and another is on the source itself just click on source and then click on new file employee.ts and then another file finally server.ts these are all typescript files okay so a quick um talk about typescript typescript simplifies javascript code making it easier to read and debug typescript is open source and it provides highly productive development tools for javascript ides and practices like static checking and typescript makes code easier to read and understand 
So you can look for any suitable resource about TypeScript if you are first time to Angular or TypeScript. That will be highly desirable. Now next we will be needing a few external packages to build the RESTful API and to connect to our MongoDB Atlas cluster. Let's install them using the npm install command which is uh, install npm install command which is on my clipboard to save time and I will click on hit on enter and it is installing those course.environment express and mongodb. So we will come back once these packages are installed by node package manager npm. You can see it is still installing those four packages it takes a wee bit of time so we'll have to be patient about that so i'll come back once these uh, packages are all installed and the next thing i'll be using is to install typescript for our server application okay so we'll be installing the typescript compiler and supporting types packages as development dependencies using the save dev flag which will come in it now you see these packages are all added, added 80 packages and audited 81 packages in 2 minutes. So, okay, now we will issue this command npm install hash hash save dev typescript, okay, and whatever, and then we will click enter. It will also take a few minutes and we will come back again. Now, as these um, TypeScript libraries or TypeScript compiler is getting installed. Let's quickly come back to package.json file that was created earlier and you'll see that these are the dependencies added with the incoming packages like dependencies course dot in express mongodb and dev dependencies at types course at types express at types node ts node and typescript. So now we can understand that we are successful in um, getting all these dependencies into our application. All right. Now let's come back to our tsconfig.json file which we have created and this is empty and I won't bore you with typing everything uh, in front of you and I'll just copy and paste. I have already copied and it is going to paste. Okay. So you can quickly see that it has got a compiler options. So this is our JSON file, um, module, ES module interrupt true, target ES6, no implicit any true, output directory, dist, base URL dot allow JS true. So, okay, so this is the TS TypeScript config file. Now, next step is to create an employee interface on the server side, okay. Since we are building an employee management app, the main data unit is the employee. All right. So let's create an employee interface that will be used to define the structure of the employee object. So what you will do is that the code that I have got my got on my clipboard. This one import star as MongoDB from MongoDB and export interface employee. This is the uh, standard notation for any Angular application. Export if it is interface, export interface, the interface name and then if it is a class then export class or employee or whatever and then here is the content of this interface, name string, position string, level junior, mid or senior. This is an enum and id is mongodb.objectid. Basically this will be filling our employee database on the MongoDB, which we will come to later. So our employees should have a name, position and level. The ID field is optional because it is generated by MongoDB. So when we are creating a new employee, we don't need to specify it. However, when you get an employee object from the database, it will have an underscore ID field populated. Next, we will be connecting to the database. So we'll already created database.ts and we'll paste some code over there. So this is <coughs> a bit of a code. So again, I have chosen not to type everything in front of you. You can follow me and I'll put this 
entire working application in github okay so there shouldn't be much problem so basically it is importing a few things import star as mongodb from mongodb import employee component from star dot employee from dot slash employee okay employee dot ts and then export const collection employees question mark question mark means if it is null then it will be um, undefined otherwise it will be mongodb dot collection employee equal to an empty array and then export async function connect to database uri string client is new mongodb dot mongodb client uri uri you will get from as a parameter and this is an asynchronous function so await client dot connect and then const db equals client this is the client it has created a mongodb client and client dot database mean stack example now we'll come to that in a minute so await apply schema validation and then const employee collection employees collection is database dot collection of type employee and within double quotes employees okay and this um, employees collection is collections dot employees is assigned the employees collection so basically we are using the mongodb node.js driver distributed as the mongodb npm package okay so first we create a new mongo client object this is the client with the provided connection string this is the connection string which will come to a bit then we connect to the database okay then we connect to the database after that we get the database object from the client object from the client object we get the database object here i wanted to point out that you know uh, const db the database object we will get from the client by calling this database function and passing the database name mean stack example now what this does if i uh, put it on the cursor mouse mouse over it creates a new db instance sharing the current socket connection and the parameter is the db name this is the db name now this db name is the name of the database we want to use if not provided uh, and if it is not provided use the database name from the connection string but our connection string is this here it does not show any database name so it will use this database name um, this one uh, means what was there mean stack example it will create a database okay so we use this object to get the employees collection okay we use this object to get the employees collection okay note that the variable employees is cast to the employee interface it is cast to the employee interface okay um, so this will provide type checking to any query we send to the database finally we assign the employees collection to the collections object okay collections dot employees the employees collection and which is exported from this file that way we can access the employees collection from other files such as employee.roots.ts file which will impl implement in our restful api we are also using json schema okay S apply schema validation this is json schema validation to ensure that all of our documents follow the shape of our in employee interface and this is a good practice to ensure that we don't accidentally store data that doesn't match the shape of our model now we will be persisting our data to a mongodb atlas cluster to connect to our cluster we will need to set an atlas uri environment variable that contains a connection string so i will now talk about the atlas cluster that i have created for this application so this is my atlas cloud okay mongodb atlas cloud de deployment atlas cluster so I have already created this. This is the cluster zero. First of all, you have to create an organization. This is the organization, my MongoDB Atlas, and this is a project. 
So everything is nicely covered in the tutorial that I have linked in initial slides and I will put it in the description of this video and then connect. If you click on connect, what happens is that, you know, you have got a few options, you know, connect with MongoDB shell, connect your application and connect using MongoDB compass. So if you click on this one, um, if I go back, connect your application. So this is the one. Ah, yeah. This is the node.js driver version 4.1 or later. And this is the code that I need to copy. Okay. So once I have copied this, so I have to replace this is my username key assume and password I have to replace with by my password without these angular brackets. And this is the whatever the cluster is cluster URI. So if I close this, it will be used just in a bit. So I will bring back my Visual Studio edi code editor. Now what I will be doing within this server, um, the source, there is a server directory mean stack example and server. I will create a file, new file and name it this environment variable file dot env env okay and in this i will paste this code uh, first of all let me paste this connection string and my password was it is not encrypted though uh, okay and then this is actually atlas uri so i leave it as it is and then save this control s so mongodb.srv colon front slash front slash my username password and whatever i got from that connection string so where did i get this password from so again i have come back to mongodb cluster and i have clicked on this database users uh, tab and if i click on edit and password is highlighted and if i click on edit password and if i click on show that will show my password okay so i'm good that's my password all right now we can load the environment variables using the env package so we can do that in any file but if it's but it is a good practice to do it as early as possible since server.ts file will be our entry point let's load the environment variable from it connect to the database and start the server so let's bring server.ts file which is empty at the moment and i paste the code which is on my clipboard and I will briefly explain. So, import course from course. Import. So, these are squiggly lines were present, which now I have removed. Is that you know I have erroneously created this dot env or environment variable file uh, within the source directory it has to be created on the server okay so i have moved it into the server so if i just uh, collapse source you can see that it is outside the source folder so it, this is on the server folder so and uh, it has taken care of this um, those squiggly lines all right so now there are no squiggly lines which were there earlier on the course or express now uh, our application is pretty much the back end is actually ready to run now if everything is all right let's run the app and see if everything works okay so we'll issue this command um, again i'll bring the terminal control and back tick okay so mean stack example
and again cd to server and issue this command source npx ts dot source slash server dot ts and let's wait and see so server is running at http localhost colon port number 5200 so that's fine good job now we are ready to build the restful api for our employees so now we'll implement a get post put and delete endpoint for our employees as you can notice that these http methods correspond to the crud operation create read update and delete so we'll be performing on our employees in the database the only caveat is that we'll have two get endpoints one for getting all employees and one for getting a single employee by id to implement the endpoints we use the router provided by express the file we'll be working on is source slash employee dot router dot ts so this is employee router dot ts so this is source slash employee dot router dot ts all right routes.ts rather so let's start by implement a get employees endpoint which will allow us to get all the employees in the database so i'll copy this code which is pretty easy to uh, go through to uh, understand we are using find method okay so we are using uh, find method find method because we are passing an empty object this is the empty object that is um, yes empty object this is a, a curly brace pair of empty curly brace we'll get all the employees in the database all right we'll then use to array method to convert the cursor to an array okay it is telling returns an array of documents finally we'll send the array of employees to the client you may notice that root is front slash okay that is the route Okay, this is the front slash so this is get i router so this is the uh, front slash this is because we'll register all endpoints from this file under the front slash employees route okay now get employees id we'll implement the get front slash employees front slash id endpoint which will allow us to get a single endpoint single employee by id and we'll append the following code to the bottom of the the same file okay so i have again copied it on my clipboard and this is the id this will find an employee by id the id of employee is provided as a parameter this is provided as a parameter we'll use the object id this is the object id method to convert the string id to a mongodb object id okay so we then use the find one method to find the employee with the given id okay if the employee is found then we'll send it to the client if the response dot status is 200 then send the employee otherwise fail to find an employee with this id response status is 404 404 not found error okay catch error so if the try block fails then the error catch block is there and it says fail to find an employee with this id okay so basically this part else part is almost the same as the error part all right except it has got a id required params required uh, dot id so this if it is not uh, request question mark dot params question mark not required request question mark and params question mark so this if it is not found then it is undefined okay all right so um this question mark symbol represents in some of the expressions above it's optional chaining operator this is called also the optional chaining operator it enables you to read the value of a nested property without throwing an error if the property does not exist 
instead of throwing an error, the expression evaluates to undefined. Now we'll go for the post employees. So on the same file, I paste the code for the post. So this is again employees dot employee dot routes dot ts. So this is post. Okay. So what it does, we receive the employee object from the client in the request body and then we'll use insert one. Uh, where is insert one? Insert one. Insert one method to insert the employee into the database. Inserts a single document into the MongoDB. If documents passed in do not contain the ID field, one will be added to each of the documents, missing it by the driver. Okay. Um, if the insertion is successful, we will send a 201 response, created a new employee with the ID of the employee, otherwise we will send a 500 internal server error, fail to create a new employee. Next comes the put employee with the ID. That means if we want to edit an employee with a certain ID. So again, going back to the end of this uh, file, we will paste another section of the code for the put. All right, so this is very similar to the post. The difference being the ID of the employee is provided as a parameter, whereas the employee object is provided in the request body. Employee object is provided in the request body. So const employee equals request dot body. Okay. We use the object ID method to convert the string ID to a Mongo object ID. Again, new MongoDB dot object ID passing the ID which I received from the parameter. And then we use the update one method to update the employee with the given ID. If the update is successful, we'll send a 200 OK response. Otherwise, we'll send a 304 not modified, failed to update an employee response. Finally, we'll come to the delete an employee with a particular ID. So again, at the end of this last section, we will put another code for finally the delete part. Now similar to the previous endpoints, we send a query to the database based on the ID passed as a parameter. We use the delete one method here, delete one to delete the employee. If the deletion is successful, we will send a response status of 200 to removed an employee. Otherwise, we will send a 400 error response failed to remove an employee. And if the um, response is 404, that means it is failed to find an employee with that ID. Okay. Um, now, next we will have to register the routes. So, register the routes, we will have to add some code on the server.ts. So you will use this import statement, import employee router from dot slash employee dot, dot routes, save this. Now this says that this is, is declared but its value is never used. So here we will use it before the app dot listen, okay, before this app dot listen. Uh, we'll use this one app dot use after app dot use course we'll write this line of code app dot use and within a pair of curly braces we'll put front slash employees and then the second parameter this use function is employee router employee router which is employee router this one which is imported from dot slash employee dot routes okay employee router and then semicolon then save all right now we have can again run this application 
by stopping the shell process with okay let's close this application terminate control c and yes to terminate the bad job and then again the npx ts mode if everything is fine it should similarly say that the server is running we will come back again we are successful again so let's um, if I hover over you can see it shows follow the link if I click follow the link it will get me to can't get because I have not uh, given the route so it is employees so I have got these employees already in my database from a previous operation so name Kaushik position IT developer level mid Ramesh Aroda. now this is in sync in the same page if I show you the my atlas cluster okay so let me go back to the atlas cluster so database deployment again on mongodb atlas then browse collections so finally it has fetched mean stack examples dot employees collection so these are the id name position level id name position level three persons were there so our back end server is ready and up and running so next part of the series so this part is finished now in the part two i'll create the angular front end application welcome all again so this is the part two and we shall be building the client angular web application as part of the mean stack tutorial and my name is Kaushik Raj Chaudhary and again welcome to my channel and let's see what will you learn we'll create an employee interface on the client side create an employee service create an employee list component create a page for adding employees and run the finished angular web application so we will consume the web api that we built in part one and in this video lecture we shall consume the web api that we built in part one with node.js express.js and mongodb and if you are coming straight to this tutorial you may like to visit the web api tutorial available at this location on youtube okay and let's see what we built in the last lecture before moving on with the angular web application so this is the application if you remember that we built last time and we have got this mean stack example the root node and there is a server folder and within the server there is a source folder having a few files okay now to run this application i will issue this command npx ts node that we learned in the last session and hit enter so server running at http localhost that is the port number now if you follow this link it will get to this error page but because i have not routed to employees which is the right route and i am instantly brought to the employees collection on mongodb cluster that we saw in the last video so it is highly recommended that you go through that web api tutorial before moving on to this with the angular application but if you are confident in having how to build the web api with the mongodb node and express then you can jump right into this tutorial no issues at all so let's move on and build our web application with angular so now we'll build the client side angular application and uh, for that we'll use the angular cli or command line interface to scaffold the application now to install it i will open a new terminal okay so we'll have to keep the server running all the time in order to see the uh, angular web application in app in action to the extent that we are going to build and when we are going to run the server should be running in the background because remember this is the angular web application which is consuming the backend web api which we have built okay so let's click on terminal and a new terminal all right so it's also on the same uh, my mean stack final folder 
and here I will give a command which is hope you are able to see this uh, it but I will zoom it further so all right just close this and then control back tick sorry it is lost um, I'll just put it little to the left side to get more real estate all right so minus g stand for global and at slash command line cli and hit enter let's see so it is installing node package manager is installing the angular cli okay so again it's important to keep the server running while you are working on the client side so which i have already shown that it is running okay so these um, the angular command line interface has been added with 33 packages and removed 10 packages changed so many packages now the fun is you can see i have got two terminals this terminal here the server is running for the back end at port 5200 and here it is the front end that i'm building the next is the we'll have to navigate to the root directory of the project and run the a command okay so let's see um, so i will cd again to mean stack example which is my root folder all right and then i will issue this command all right so under the mean stack example i have got this uh, mean stack example slash uh, server this is the server so now i will uh, issue this command so follow along ng ng for angular ng new client routing hash hash okay that's it so it is saying something uh, 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 ng C user cannot be loaded because the running script is disabled on this system okay so at this position i came across this error so let's see how to solve this so i have to browse to this directory so i'll copy this part control c and then open it on the file explorer So the problem is again that C uses Kaushik app data roaming slash npm ng.ps1 cannot be loaded because running script is disabled on this system. Now I found a solution for this that remove ng.ps1 from the directory and then try clearing the npm cache. Okay, so let me go back to that directory um, and I have gone back to that directory Kaushik app data. Um, roaming npm and I will just delete this let me see if it helps me delete that's it and I don't need to do anything further and then come back to the code and then uh, let me try running it again something is happening now would you like to share the anonymous usage data about the yes or no uh, okay yes okay which of the now it this is better which style sheet format would you like to use c css uh, 
what I would like to do CSS okay now it is installing the packages all right so after it finishes I will come back again see it is still installing all the packages and it has already clear, created the client directory so once it finishes I will cd to that client directory and I will issue a command ng serve to um, actually run the application in its current state so now it comes back with all the packages installed successfully directory is already under version control skipping initialization of git okay so I'm not worried about the version control however the version control so many files are ready to be published so I will do that later but first uh, I will cd to this client directory which is the angular front end okay so cd client so it is now I'm on the client client directory and then I will issue this command ng serve and output directory minus o okay so let's see what happens so it is generating browser application bundles set up face and it will take a wee while you know sometimes a couple of minutes before it actually builds the server and we can browse our freshly created angular front-end application just the templated application so this is our front-end application angular built in angular is running on the localhost 4200 port all right so we can at the moment we can stop that and we can start building our application now we'll control c to uh, stop the application and we'll start from fresh now finally for styling we'll use bootstrap now we'll add something to the head section in the source index.html so this is the client there's a source folder and there is the index.html now so what i will do i have actually made this uh, github full repository for the um, front end as well as the back end application KRC home mean stack example and I will be just expanding and browsing to the correct file and folder and then um, what I will do I will just copy so in the source I had got this index.html and I will click on raw to get the raw version of this and I will just copy the code okay and come back to my um, Visual Studio Code application and paste it there. So henceforth, what I shall do is, uh, you know, I, whenever I need to change a code or add a code into an empty file or a templated file, any newly created file, I will just come back and browse to my code at the um, relevant section of this application and then just click on that file, come back to raw and then take the code and paste it so i will not be showing this repository again and again but it will be down there in the description okay save it okay this will save a lot of time of course on unnecessary typing and you can take that time in actually explaining okay so it has got uh, the same the title is as client base href front slash and these are the five lines that i needed to add in so there is a href to a CDN okay um, content developer network for the bootstrap minimum class and then a script source there is a script source for the bootstrap that is the JavaScript and the cross origin is anonymous so let's don't bother about the cross origin but we'll just get going now we'll create an employee interface on the client side so similar to our server side application we will create an angular interface for our employees we'll use the employee interface to define the properties of our employee objects so we'll open a new terminal window and run the the command so our new 
terminal window is already there it's uh, running that uh, client side angular web application and i've got this server side okay so this was separate and distinct entity so as i have been saying uh, repetitively the server should be running at any time that you'd like to um, run the entire application uh, with the front end as well as the back end so the code is Excuse my typing, just all the time doing some funny tricks. NG generate interface employee. So it will generate an employee interface. Okay. Let's wait. So as you can see, it has already created source app employee.ts. Okay. So source app. So this is employee.ts this is the javascript file or typescript file rather so this is the interface you can see export interface employee now in this interface the code for this interface will come again from uh, this github so this is so this is again the employee typescript employee interface file so i will just click on raw and copy everything and then just write it over and then save it and then go back again next to create a employee service now angular recommends separating your business logic from your presentation logic now that's why you will create a service that handles all communication with the employee endpoint of the api the service will be used by the components in the application to generate the service we'll run this command ng again ng generate service like previously it was ng generate interface now it will be ng service then employee so employee service it will generate so it has generated employee service app in the app folder it has got employee.service.ts so this is employee.service.ts okay now this is my employee.service.ts file and i will copy the code from here and paste it over here again um, and then it here you are using HTTP client service to make HTTP requests as you can see performs HTTP request this service is available as an injectable class with methods to perform HTTP requests each request method has multiple signatures and the return type varies based on the signature that is called all right and the HTTP client service is provided by angular through the http client module it's not part of the application by default so we need to import it in the app.module.ts so let's open the app.module.ts file this file okay so we'll import this statement uh, anywhere should do or you can just do it at the top of the module so import within curly braces http client module from it takes the rest of the thing from at the rate angular slash common slash http okay and then save it right now we'll add the module to the list of imports in the app dot app module class so what is the app module class this is the app module class app dot module dot ts so following the app routing module just put a comma and then put this HTTP client module okay 
and then save it again. Next, we'll create a new page that displays a table with our employees. Now, for that, we'll create an employee list component and we'll create a new page for our table with employees. In Angular, a component is a reusable piece of code that can be used to display a view. We'll create a new component called employee list or employees list and then also register it with front slash employees root in the application. And to generate the component, again, this is the ng generate component. So here it is under source app and employees list component dot ts. Okay, so just put it to the left side as much as possible. So this is my employees list component dot ts. And in here, I will again get back to my mean stack example uh, code, GitHub source code and uh, get it from here. So employees list employees list component dot cs go to raw copy everything highlight and copy everything and then highlight and then copy it over all right so employees list component dot ts so that component is also there we'll just close this to show you the more real estate so this is employees list component and it has got a decorator as component at component decorator that this at component decorator is used to indicate that this class is a component the selector property this is the selector property is app employees list is used to specify the html tag and that will be used to display this component okay uh, there is a spoiler alert. We won't use this selector at all. Instead, we'll register the component as a route. The template property is, this is the template property. This template property is used to specify the HTML template that will be used to display the component. So this is the HTML template. So name, position, level, action. Okay. The implementation of the class contains the logic for the component. The ng on init method. So there is an ng on init method. So on init method uh, <clears throat> so this ng on init method is called when the component is rendered on the page so this dot fetch employees now this is a good place to fetch the list of employees for that we are using the employee service we created earlier now the get employees method so let's see where is the get employees method this is the fetch employees method and this is the in within the fetch employees method it uses the get employees method so get employees method returns an observable we uh, subscribe to it with the async pipe in the template this will automatically render the list of employees as soon as the data is available we are using a table to display the employees together with a few bootstrap classes that make it look nicer okay so this is an observable. Now uh, we said that get employees method returns an observable and we subscribe to it with the async pipeline in the template. So this is the async pipeline. Okay. Um, so T body, table body, ng for let employee of employees within the employees. And this is the pipe symbol and async. So this is async pipeline okay this is the async pipe in the template and for seeing what is the content of the gets employees we have to come to the services employee services dot ts and here is there are quite a few uh, methods here are, uh, functions so get employees is this dot refresh employees and this re it returns this dot employees okay now uh, what is this refresh employees and this refresh employees uh, refresh employees it uses the HTTP client and calls the get method of the employee array and passes this dot URL dot employees and 
then it subscribes to the employees and it goes to the next employee so subscribe method is an observable of employee and this next value okay so sub it subscribes and to the next so this part is very important it refreshes the employee so it it is an observable so if it subscribes if there is a change in the status of the employee it, it is notified and it then goes for the next employee okay there are also a few actions in the template for editing deleting and adding new employees the router link attribute is used to navigate to the employee edit id route which we will implement later in the tutorial the click event is used to call the delete employee method this method implemented in the class uses the employee service to delete an employee now that we have created our component we need to register it as a route in the app.routing.module.ts file and we will replace the contents of this file so let us see app.routing.module.ts so this is our app.routing.module dot ts and in which we will get the code so app and app dot routing dot module dot ts click on raw click on whatever is just copy on your clipboard whatever is available over here and then copy it over control a highlight everything and then control v okay and then i will explain it in a bit so these are not there cannot find module so it this will come at the moment uh, okay and we will come back to it so at the moment these two components are not required because we haven't built it so we'll come back to it later so what we'll do it will um, we'll actually edit and we'll toggle block comment okay we'll toggle these two so basically um, this is actually not viewing it correctly so I will basically get rid of it let's get rid of it okay and then also these two paths these two line of code this will come back and add it later so let me come back again so till from here till we'll get rid of it okay and then save so there was a angular this is a brace you know um square bra bracket so it is, is closing it so we'll close this and at ng module everything else is the same fine and then we'll go to the app.component.ts file app.component.ts file okay and we'll remove the extraneous content from the template and we'll leave only the router outlet tag wrapped in the div tag so what we'll do is import component from angular core component selector app root template and rather than we have got template url and style url we'll get rid of that and we'll make this template and we'll start writing the template ourselves so this is a div class container md router outlet
and hinder router outlet. And end div. Okay. So div class. Uh, something is wrong here. Squiggly lines. Property boolean. Expected view problem. No quick fixes available. So we'll get back to our code and the visual uh, on the GitHub and then come back again after copying it on the clipboard. Actually, this is not single code but this is back tick okay so this is back tick so everything will be within this back tick so this is here so uh, if i put this template within back tick let's see x within back tick all right it has taken care of the errors okay there we are this is angular for you okay template has to be written within a pair of back ticks now i've given this angular application a run command with ng serve oh again let's see so you can see that we have a table and we have some employees because that is where my, uh, my i have done from a previous run of this application i have created an actual database and i have all these employees already there that's why it is coming um okay so what i can do i can um if i click on add a new employee nothing will come up because nothing is there actually and it is just deleting employees okay and for edit it cannot add an edit okay that's from a previous run so we'll get with that if you click on add employee nothing will happen now we'll create a page for adding employee i will keep it open now okay so i'll keep it open keep it keep it running as well as the server is running in the background okay web api now we'll create a page for adding employees so for that again i have to break control c to break the live session and then ng generate component employee form we'll create an employee form because we need a form for filling in name position level to create a new employee for editing existing employees we'll need a similar form so we'll create an employee form now so ng generate So this should generate a employee form now let's start by importing the reactive forms module in our app uh, app module dot t is not app routing but you know this let me close this uh, most of these files which are not important at the moment you close all okay come from the fresh uh, from the scratch again fresh slate so we'll get app.module.ts so where is the app.module.ts app.module.ts okay so here um, we will import the reactive forms module so import this is the one reactive forms module okay from angular slash forms okay this is the new lines that new line we have added and we'll be again importing it over here after the employee form component mm. sorry browser module app routing module http client module and after that it will import the reactive forms module reactive forms module tab control s for saving it provide this empty array bootstrap app component and export class app module 
right now we can use angular's form builder to create a reactive form so we'll go for employee form component dot ts employee form this is nicely created in its own um, folder employee form so employee form component dot ts employee form component dot ts component dot spec dot ts employee form component dot ts so this is employee form component dot ts and again i will get some more real estate by putting it on the left side so i've got this component and um, I will create the reactive form and I will get a few um, um, import statements. All right. So we have got import component on in it. So I've got an event emitter also over here. Event emitter, we'll come back to it later. Event, what is event emitter? on in it and there is an input and there is on in it and then there is an output so basically these are for emitting events you know when uh, the uh, i mean so transferring from parent to children and from the ch children to parent components it uses input and output okay um, right so and a few more uh, import statements are there so now we'll go to employee form component dot ts and then copy everything over there and then control c to copy and then highlight everything and then copy it over Okay, and then save it there's a lot of code here but there isn't anything groundbreaking to it we are just using the form builder to create a reactive form with three fields and we are also adding validation to the form now the template is displaying the error message in case there is a validation error and we are using at input that is what I said we are using at input to pass in the initial state of the form from the parent component and the type of at input is behavior subject employee because we might pass async data into the form. For example, the parent component might fetch the employee data from an API and pass it to the form. The child component will get notified when the new data is available. And the at output, so this output, uh, this at output is an event emitter that will emit the form values whenever the form is submitted the parent will handle the submission and send an api call okay and i was talking about the it is um, using uh, three fields okay so these are the three fields you can see name and then this is some validation name dot errors it should be a minimum length of at least three character long and name field as such is name is required field okay and then this is a another type text another text box and it has got a placeholder position and form control name is position and the label is position okay so name position and then uh, some uh, validation for position like it is a required field and position must be at least five characters long okay and then there is a input type radio and radio button is for level junior for level junior it is junior and for level mid mid and some junior mid and senior these are three radio buttons okay and there is a submit button right the next step is to implement the add employee component so we'll generate a component so control plus back tick it will again generate that it will open the terminal for me there is a shortcut key control and back tick right so ng generate component it's 
start from here. And hyphen in play. I'm not sure what this M flag stands for, but you can have a look at the, the NPM um, website. So now this is this will create a component add employee component. So this is the add employee component. So I think we are, you know, you have put the zoom to very high extent. So I'll reduce the zoom. I'll zoom out a little. So it is more easily visible, right? So it's just a compromise between, you know, looking uh, at big uh, format, formatted, um, I mean, uh, big font size and being able to accommodate maximum possible thing within the real estate available to us. Okay. So here within this employee component, employee component dot TS, I have to change the code. So this employee component dot TS code will come from again our uh, GitHub source code, good old GitHub source code. So hopefully you will be understanding that you know, due to time restraint I'm not able to copy everything it should take hours actually so hopefully you'll be all right you'll permit me you'll forgive me for this so employee form employee not the employee form uh, add employee okay so add employee dot component dot ts I will take the raw version copy everything copy it over and then save it okay it's quite a few things on how to add an employee new employee so it has all these import statements component from angular code router from angular router employee from dot dot front slash employee and employee service from dot dot employee service okay so this is also created in the app folder and employee service is created outside so that's why it has to go out and then look for employee service and as well as the employee interface right so now we are using the employee form and whenever the add employee component receives a form submission it will call the employee service to create the employee the employee service will emit an event when the employer is employee is created and the add employee component will navigate back to the table of employees while we are at it, we are at it, let's implement the component for editing an employee. Now we'll have to create a component for editing an employee. This is add employee component. Okay, this is add employee method. It is employee interface. Okay, it, uh, this is employee is actually a parameter. It actually implements employee interface. This dot employee services. See, employee service is called dot create employee dot subscribe dot next. Okay this dot router dot navigate front slash employee and if it is error it will alert it will put an alert screen with fail to create employee okay and it will write it on the console also add employee component it's simple enough not much of a problem and then ng generate I'm sorry, what is happening here? Um, oh, sorry, collection schematic is required. Okay, that, that's fine. I didn't look at it. So ng is typing on the existing <laughs> command. So ng generate component. Edit. M any generate component edit employee m flag app again so 
So again, this edit employee component is created, and then we'll finally this um, edit the edit employee component. The TS file. This is the edit employee component, and for that again, we'll look into our source code, good GitHub source code, and then app go back to app folder, edit employee, edit employee component dot ts click on raw copy everything i like this and copy it over and then save it the usual steps So this is app routing and go click on raw so it is the app routing model.ts file is there and we'll copy everything and then we'll copy, we'll just highlight this and paste this. Okay. So previously I was still copying something wrong. Now it's all right. All right, it's all done now. And let's start the application once again because I've stopped the application to make those changes, add and edit components, etc. So, um, All right, this is the command ng serve o. You can see again it is generating browser application bundles. Set up face, it will, the browser has come up. Click on add a new employee. So add, say, check. Say anything like DevOps. Add okay, you can you could successfully add the employee? So, this is all CRUD applications happening. So, now if you edit it, you should be able to edit Jack and Jill, whatever <laughs> junior position, junior position, DevOps, Jack and Jill. You can now delete, you can add a new employee, create another employee. developer senior developer add it create another employee julie operator mid operator add it so jack harry and julie both are there all right so we have been able to successfully do all the create four i mean four functionalities create retrieve update and delete for an employee database okay so what is our conclusion so in this application we have been successfully able to bind a front end which consumes our web api backend that we have created in the previous tutorial and thank you all for joining me on this journey and following along i hope you enjoyed it and learned a lot and you are using the same language throughout the stack with the main stack javascript additionally mongodb's document model makes it natural to map data to objects as and mongodb's atlas forever fleet cluster makes it easy to host your data without worrying about costs thank you very much